asked to use 25.4 gram of iodine and dissolve it in 6 gram of uh, potassium iodide solution up to 1 dm cube okay that is what i'm trying to do here trying to get the zero value of uh, the petri dish on the beam balance yes i use the analog i use the analog uh, actually i do uh, make use of it sometimes and most times let me put it like that okay we have here 16.5 gram and we need to add it to the 25.4 gram of the iodine so that we are going to balance it at that point the value is 41.9 so uh, i bring up my iodine after i've pushed this to at 40 and 1.9 therefore 40 plus 1.9 will give us that 41.9 i added the iodine so that the pointer of the beam balance will be at zero i noticed that it was above this that's why i reduced some portion of the iodine from it the next thing i need to do is to take it and put it inside a beaker and cover it and uh, when i cover it i need to bring up the sodium to sulfate and also do the same thing for what i did for the iodine uh, i need to measure out the petri dish zero level and then add the sodium sulfate inside it but before that i need to bring that thing back to the zero level and measure it and i found out that the value oh, actually ended up being at that same 16.5 gram that is the petri dish and you know we are trying to get the mass of the sodium sulfate and the mass of the sodium sulfate added to the petri dish should be 16.5 plus 24.8 which is going to give us 41 point three and you know what is happening here i have already gotten 16.5 that i need to push the bigger uh -huh, that one uh, at 40 then i need to push this one also at uh 1.3 then i need to bring down my sodium to sulfate uh to it and measure it up to that to see when my pointer is at zero we normally call it at equilibrium or at balance value in that place now when i get that uh thank you my student uh mr imole uh, who was actually the cameraman for me on this and uh, measure this thing i need to put it back to uh the, the beaker I need to put into a beaker and cover it too because they actually ask us to prepare this by covering putting it inside a cork that is when you are done with the preparation you need to put it inside a cork for the students that is why okay the next thing to do is to prepare that of a potassium iodide they ask us to make use of six gram actually to be frank this six gram is too poor when we compare it with what is supposed to be so that we will have a higher measure of uh, iodine being dissolved. Therefore, I do the same thing again with this. I notice that the potassium iodide for me to do it is dropping at uh, seventeen point which when added to the six is giving me twenty three point seven. Therefore, I need to put it down in that twenty three point seven okay uh, then i need to bring in my io uh, not the iodine i need to bring the potassium iodide down there and mix it up and get my accurate uh six gram but remember this is analog analog will not give it perfectly accurate uh, it would have been much 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 better if the uh digital was used but what about those people that don't have the digital that is why i make use of it to also encourage those people that make have used only the analog that they can actually prepare that without using the digital that can be so fast and quick and if you can see uh there is uh, a little bit uh good work from that and i believe you can also do that I okay the next thing to go for is to uh try to dissolve this iodine in water 
yes it is not going to be easy i removed these uh, beam balance because it's no longer important because i've actually measured the three things that are required then this water was actually 400 ml and i'm trying to shake this in order to see that this dissolve now i need to fast forward this again and i'm using a uh, a glass rod the glass rod i used uh i was actually doing it as if you are trying to pound something or grind something so that the iodine will be able to uh have a larger surface area so that it can be able to dissolve inside the water i actually make use of water first before adding the potassium iodide because if i have used the potassium iodide, iodide adding inside the water directly uh, many of the iodine that dissolved will not dissolve uh, you're going to understand what i mean by that because i believe if you are a teacher watching this uh your reading your uh end point is too high you 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 can understand that except you are trying to play a game and use a uh, the alternative that is trying to use a theoretical aspect and even the theoretical aspect fails us because what it gave us to use is six gram by the theoretical aspect is supposed to be more than a six gram you understand it if you watch my uh possible questions from wayek what they can actually give us on the practical day i actually did a strong work over here trying to dissolve this therefore i'm going to fast forward this thing from here so that this video will not take much much longer just bear with me on that just know that what i'm doing here is just to grind this I first of all dissolve most of them with water before i move it over to use uh, my potassium iodide the potassium iodide you are seeing here there, there was actually some problem rain was actually falling that i need to move from one place to another in order to prepare this thing properly i started adding my potassium iodide gradually small by small uh, I add it I try to make sure that I uh, grind it well and whenever I add it there is a different color change this color is very different from the one you are seeing inside here the other one is just a normal water trying to dissolve iodine okay I'm also going to fast forward this thing again because I am trying to fight for the uh, data consumption okay you can notice that the color differs here shaking uh these uh i have actually done the good work that i supposed to this took me up to two hours 14 minutes that i need to prepare it and put it inside uh, uh volumetric flux that is what i am doing i'm also going to fast forward it uh here again so that we are actually fighting for the data consumption here i am trying to complete the uh, mark of the volumetric flux then i brought it closer so that you see what i want to do and this is the 1000 uh, ml okay i need to keep it away so that i would not break it 
unknowingly that is why i need to push this thing away from this place after i've shaked it for a little while uh, i took it somewhere far away from here and you can see it where i am going to drop it okay that is where i dropped it and i continue with the sodium to sulfate and you know this one is very very simple therefore i am going to fast forward it fast again for us here i what i needed to do here is to clean up whatever i have done here let me fast forward it again even the student yourself i know you can do it therefore i'll just fast forward it directly uh, what i want to do here is to have a short demonstration of this without even using the uh starch solution here uh what i normally do on this is just make use of my uh, measuring cylinder i'll use my measuring cylinder to do this and to check uh, if it is possible now you know they normally ask us to use 25 centimeter cube then i normally use 10 centimeter cube to see uh how much of uh solution a will be required for this and that is why i brought in this measuring cylinder i shaped my solution a very well and i also make sure that uh it is well mixed and i'm also going to use it as a here yeah, but i'm going to first of all add a uh, 10 centimeter cube of the solution b which is this uh, colorless on sodium to sulfate that is the solution b i'm going to add in there i need to just make some parts of this get some of uh, the iodine solution into a beaker thank god it is uh, a colored uh, chemical and the other one is non color chemical therefore i will not have problem to know which one is solution a and which one is solution b since we know that the dark one is actually solution a and the colorless is the solution b i drop that in far away so that i will not be mistake by heating on it and you know, get lost the chemical and also shake this internally and uh, add it to a beaker uh, and I'm having two beakers representing uh, the solution A and solution B. The solution A is the dark color and the solution B is the colorless one. Now, the next thing I need to do is to bring it close and come and do this practical with uh, uh, measuring cylinder. Yes, it is abnormal. Uh, not every uh, chemistry teacher would do that or every researcher, but I normally use this to know the extent to which uh the end point will be i'm going to show you something just watch here i'm going to show you something and why it is very very important to practice this along with me okay in this video i will pause here after this little demonstration when we come over in the major uh, uh question and the answer i am going to show you how to do it i'm going to titrate it so that to prove that what i have here as a value is very very close to the answer i'm going to show you something here let me put this in a little bit fast forward